Doug Thompson here, and we're in my shop, and uh, I've got some benders set up. I've built both of these benders. This is actually kind of designed and laser cut. This is actually kind of a handmade bender. I have had this set up on this bender to do compression bending. What that means is that the setting leg here, I call it the setting leg, is set up against a block. I've additionally clamped it. So if you're gonna do really accurate bending, this is what I do. I'll have a dedicated stop, and then I'll clamp off the part with a vice grip. So I've made a stop. For accurate bending, you have to control the length of the cut, the setup to the stop, and the degree of bend. Now again, this is compression bending. So when I bend with this handle to this stop, I don't want the material behind the form die to move. In other words, I don't want this to move. So if I make a bend, slowly make it, I'm gonna hit the stop and that completes my bend. If I have the same heat lot of material, I can bend over and over and over and get the same exact part. Typically, you're gonna to have to set up the stop in such a way to account for, now watch this, how that moved back a little bit and that's called spring back. So you have to do a little bit of test bending to get all that right. So this is called compression bending. If we move over to here, I've got uh, another bender set up to do draw bending. We're gonna draw the material through the bender. In other words, this material will now move. Typically this is used in tube bending so that in the region of bend, if need be, on the sophisticated benders, you can have a set of mandrels inserted in the tube. So in the region of bend, the wall won't collapse. There are all different ways of doing it. But this is a relatively simple illustration of draw bending. So as I pull on the handle, the material will be drawn through the die. It will move. So you'll see it move. And again, I have a stop in place here so that if I can control the orientation and the placement of the bar, and I stop at the same point, and all of these are the same length, I'm gonna get the same part. I find it easier with small parts to use the compression bending to do multiple bends, because on, in this setup, I have my little rail here, and I can set a block on it, and I can get very accurate parts. I've done jobs where I've had to do maybe 300 parts, and then it'll all be exactly the same. Now, this is a small bender, all of these principles apply as you size up your bender. 